What's going on guys, this is Brad and today I'm ranking the Cuphead DLC bosses from easiest to hardest in my personal opinion. I just want to make you very aware before I start that this is for expert difficulty specifically. All of the bosses that I'm fighting in the video I have done so on expert difficulty. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So number 7 is the Moonshine mob. I've got to be honest, I find this boss pretty easy actually, even on expert. The first thing you're going to have to do is fight against this spider enemy who will frequently drop bombs that you can see on screen currently, which can pretty easily be avoided if you just dash through them. The spider is also going to summon small enemies to fire projectiles at you and try to bump into you to cause damage. You'll see these coming out of the backgrounds and from the sides of the screen. The spider will also try to throw a caterpillar at you which bounces around the screen. But I don't find any of these projectiles particularly difficult to dodge. The next phase is actually pretty interesting because it's a reimagining of one of the bosses that was removed from the game, which was called The Light. So we get to fight against The Light now, and what you're going to need to do is dodge the lines that you can see when they are red. If the lines are yellow, it's like a warning to get ready to dodge out of the way. If they are green, they'll pass through you. I think it's really cool that the developers actually brought this particular boss back into the game, even if it is more of a mini boss or a phase. Now this is where this fight starts to get a lot more difficult. This is the only part of this boss that I would say is actually hard. The anteater will poke his snout on the left and right side of the screen at complete random, and then he'll kind of spit this ball of enemies at you, which you can see bouncing around on screen just now. The reason that this phase is kind of hard is because you have absolutely no idea where the snout is going to appear and it's really hard to read. Not only that, but avoiding these two dust balls of enemies that are bouncing from the left to the right side of the screen. When you pass this phase, you're going to see a fake knockout screen, which I think is incredible. The fight's not over just yet. You're going to need to take down the snail who is sat on top of the anteater's head. He has very little health. Even on expert, you can deal with him quite quickly. So number six is the Angel and Demon, which is the hidden boss fight that you can unlock via the graveyard. It's ranked quite low on the list because it only has one phase and there's only really one attack pattern that you need to learn. Depending on which direction the player is facing will determine which side the demon appears on. The Angel will always appear behind the player and they cannot deal any damage to them. The boss will shoot fire projectiles at the player, as well as sending a pillar of flame through the screen. There's also a small cloud platform that has lightning underneath it. This lightning will actually damage you, so you've got to be careful. This boss is a little tricky, but it is a pretty short fight. So number five is Glumstone, and this is quite an interesting one for me because, in my personal opinion, this boss is not that difficult. But with that being said, there are a few things you need to be mindful of. There's a lot of projectiles coming at you during the first phase, but there are also a ton of gnomes who appear from the bottom of the screen. And you really got to watch out for these guys because they can hit you when you're not paying attention. They're so small and they shoot out these tiny projectiles as well. And you can find yourself getting hit by these if you're not paying attention. When you've dealt enough damage to Glumstone, he rips his beard off, which looks unbelievably painful. And you're on to the second phase, which is the hardest part of this boss, in my personal opinion. Glumstone will be seen with hand puppets of King Dice and the Devil, which is incredible in itself. But you have to be very careful not to get hit by the bouncing ball that they throw to each other. This can really catch you off guard because there is lots of gnomes that pop up from the ground during this stage. It's actually kind of tricky to avoid all of them and also keep your eye on that ball that's bouncing from the left to the right side of the screen. The final phase is pretty easy in my opinion. Glumstone will eat you and you'll be down in his digestive system. Little bit gross, but there we go. You have quite limited space on where you can stand here and you need to jump on these platforms. If you're running out of space, you'll have to parry the bells that you just saw there in order to make more platforms appear. The boss is positioned above you for the entire fight, and there are projectiles to avoid. But in my personal opinion, this final phase is pretty easy. The only factor that I would say makes this part hard is if you struggle to parry the bells in order to give yourselves more platforms to stand on, then you might have a little bit of difficulty at the end. Number four is the Howling Aces. 
You might be surprised at how high on the list this is in terms of difficulty, as the first two phases are honestly really easy and I don't struggle with them at all. But I really, really struggle with the final phase, as you'll see in the video. So for the first phase, you will have to fire up above in order to deal damage to the boss. And then the boss will drop down and attack you from the left and right side of the screen. There's not that many projectiles on screen, and it's pretty easy to avoid taking damage here. I would be surprised if anyone found this first part difficult, even on Expert. The second phase is also pretty easy. You get surrounded by four dogs on jetpacks. Now there is a secret boss phase that you can unlock during this stage, but I'm really bad at it because I always end up killing these dogs too quickly. All you have to do here is avoid the letters that they shoot at you. But for those curious about the secret boss phase, what you need to do is ensure that the smoke from each of the four dogs jetpacks is gray and then don't kill any of them. Doing that will trigger the secret phase in this boss. Now this is where I really struggle with this particular boss. You have to avoid all of these lasers and your reaction time has to be incredible in order to not get hit by that. There's also this phase where you need to avoid the red and yellow bowls. The red bowls will stay low and the yellow bowls will be up in the air. So if you jump too much, you're going to get hit by them. The stage will repeatedly spin around on its side and upside down. And it's going to take you a bit of practice to get used to this, especially on Expert. Not only do you have to be extremely careful not to get hit by these bowls, but you also immediately get thrust back into the part with the lasers. And it can be really overwhelming, honestly. This boss does throw me off quite a lot. Number three is Esther Winchester. Now, she's quite an interesting one because Esther is the only flying stage in the DLC. And I do think that she's pretty challenging. She's way harder than the flying stages that we see in the main Cuphead game, such as Hildeberg. There is so much going on, even in the first phase. There's a bird that drops dynamite that you've got to dodge. Esther shoots snake oil guns at you. There's other projectiles flying at you. And there's a move where she will pull a cactus towards you, which takes up the entire half of the screen. You really, really have to constantly be moving during that first phase. There's a lot going on there. During the second phase, Esther will bring out a vacuum cleaner and start hoovering money in. Now this money is an absolute pain to avoid because as soon as these safes explode you'll see wads of cash and small coins all over the screen. These are extremely difficult to dodge due to how quickly they're moving and how small they are. You're really really going to have to pay attention here and I frequently take damage on this part. I think I've done quite well in this particular video that I'm showing you but I very often get hit by those. So the final two phases of this boss, things get particularly weird. You have to move up and down a lot because there's those cans you can see flying around. Esther will also spit pieces of meat at you which travel in a spiral pattern. After you've done that phase, you're going to see the hot dogs spreading across the entire screen like this. You have quite limited space on where you can move here as you can only travel through the spaces in between the hot dogs. This part is actually kind of difficult and you really need to focus and concentrate. There are so many small projectiles during this entire boss fight, which is why I find it as difficult as I do. And I definitely think it's the hardest flying stage in the entire game, personally. Number two is Mortimer Freeze. This boss is really difficult in my opinion, especially the second and third phases. During the first phase, you're going to have to avoid these little icicles that are dropped down, as well as these fortune cards that fall down from the top of the screen. Mortimer will also pull a whale out of his hat and try to hit you with it. You have to be careful to dodge out of the way of this, as he's constantly moving between the left and right side of the screen. You don't want to be underneath him when he does this. So the second phase is where this boss starts getting really difficult. When he drops this snowman monster, there's so many different attacks that you need to learn. There's a rolling attack where the snowman will travel from the left to the right side of the screen very quickly. And his main attack is when he transforms into a fridge and sends out ice cubes and icicles. The third attack is when he fires up these swords from the ground as you just saw. 
you have no idea which of these attacks that the boss is going to be using, and he can send them out at complete random, which really keeps you on your toes. This phase has so much going on, and now we're on to the final phase, which is incredibly difficult in my opinion. This is one of the hardest phases in this entire game, in my personal opinion. This attack where the eyeball fires vertically is kind of tricky to dodge, but not only that, you're going to get a ton of projectiles firing at you, like these snow cones. I think the main thing that makes this phase particularly difficult for me is the fact that you have very limited space to jump around while you've got so much coming at you. I still haven't been able to S rank this boss on Expert because I keep taking damage on the final phase. This attack is particularly brutal where the boss fires these buckets at you and then you get moons coming from behind you. It's just an overwhelming amount of stuff that you're trying to avoid all at once and this boss is really difficult. Number one, as you probably guessed it, is Chef Salt Baker, the final boss of the game. This boss is extremely difficult on Expert, far more so than he is on regular difficulty. There are so many things on screen during this first phase that you're going to have to dodge. The limes that boomerang from the left to the right side of the screen, to the doe that jumps at you in a bunny-like pattern, to the fireball that guys that jump around who are incredibly annoying, more on those later. And you also have sugar cubes and strawberries that both have their own unique patterns. The strawberries will fall in a diagonal pattern from the top of the screen, whilst the sugar cubes will move in a wave-like pattern across the screen. You need to avoid all of this all at the same time, and you barely have a break. It's really, really overwhelming. So now we're on to the second phase. Now, people have said to me that they find this second phase easy. I actually find it pretty difficult. I always end up taking at least two hits here on Expert. The Fireball guys are incredibly annoying because you can't deal damage to them, and they always jump in the most awkward patterns when you're trying to avoid everything else that's on screen. You have leaves falling down from the top of the screen, and you also have the Fireball guys jumping in an arc-like pattern whilst the peppers in all four corners are also shooting projectiles at you. In order to deal damage to Salt Baker here, you need to deal damage to the peppers so that the peppers will be fired into his face, acting as a sort of projectile. Now we're on to the grand finale, and you really need to be careful during this first part because as soon as Salt Baker drops down, he will try to drop down on your current position. I've taken a hit so many times from this, so you just need to be careful. There are two saw blades on the ground as well when you're on expert difficulty. As soon as you've done this very short phase, you're now on to the final phase where you're constantly jumping up and up, which really reminds me of Rumor Honey Bottoms and bosses like that from the base game. In order to deal damage to Salt Baker here, you need to shoot the heart that you can see flying around. Now, do bear in mind that you can still take damage from the sides of the screen here, but you are able to parry Salt Baker, which will help build your meter and get some distance away from the boss. So that has been my video on the Cuphead DLC bosses, ranked from easiest to hardest. Do let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of my choices. This has been Breadbin. Thank you for watching. Breadbin out.